What's up, Mena Nerds? This video is all about Anakin's personal ship during the opening of the Clone Wars, his highly modified Delta VII Starfighter. Let me get this out of the way first, that yes, the ship was introduced in the original cartoon version of the Clone Wars back in 2003, a show which was admittedly a bit over the top. But this ship isn't just some silly throwaway creation, as the modifications are not absurd, they actually make a lot of sense in existing Star Wars lore. And not only has this ship appeared in more serious material like novels, guidebooks, and encyclopedias, but it also influenced other ships in canon material. What I'm trying to say is that the Azure Angel does have a real place in Star Wars lore, and more serious material hasn't even tried to back away from this ship, or really much of anything from this old cartoon. They actually keep making references to this cartoon, which to me enshrines its place in Star Wars lore. The depiction of lightsaber crystals coming from the caves on a snowy world was kept in the animated Clone Wars TV show. And something closer to the ship is that in the canon Clone Wars series, Anakin gifts the Blade of Doran to Plo Koon, a ship which Anakin painted in the same style as the now Legends Azure Angel. The Delta VII was nicknamed the Jedi Starfighter because they were purchased directly by the Jedi Order as a primary means of personal transport. When the Clone Wars broke out, it was very handy that these were already designed with dangerous missions in mind, but for some Jedi, it wasn't quite good enough. Stock, its top atmospheric speed would have been 1,260 km per hour, or 783 miles per hour, making it just a bit faster than a TIE Fighter. But with Anakin's modifications, it must have hit speeds of at least 1500 km per hour, which is the fastest of the Yetta 2 models, but I really wouldn't be surprised if it got past 2000, or even more. These puny, dual light laser cannons had to go, in favor of four Taman back medium laser cannons. Remember, Anakin was a mechanical genius since a child, and was able to condense and reconfigure the innards of this ship, moving the astromech socket over, slightly raising the cockpit, and then used the extra space created to pack in a proton torpedo launcher, with a total of 16 proton torpedoes on board. These larger, externally mounted engines on the ventral side could be used to assist in real space acceleration, but were aftermarket hyperdrive thrusters, connected to a compact hyperdrive which allowed this Delta VII to cross the galaxy without the need of a hyperdrive ring. Complex hyperroutes were calculated by R4P22, the droid around before Padme gifted Anakin her house's royal astromech R2D2. And though they might not look as impressive as those enormous thrusters, these small articulating foils added to the wings and cockpit of this ship helped to turn raw power into agile maneuverability. Of course, it needed a custom paint job, so for that, Anakin wanted to invoke the pod racer that won him his freedom and set him on the path to becoming a Jedi Knight. But despite all these amazing upgrades, some Jedi felt that it was the embodiment of many of Anakin's flaws. He modeled it off his pod racer because he could not let go of the past. The act of modifying a personal ship itself was a form of taking possession of something, instead of leaving it as a part of a communal Jedi Starfighter fleet. And all this work and effort put into the Azure Angel was in itself the practice of forming attachments. But despite all the naysayers, fellow tinkerer and Starfighter enthusiast Saisi Tin encouraged Anakin to push this Delta VII to its limits, because he knew that it would lead to a series of improvements that would eventually have to be incorporated in the next generation of Jedi Starfighters. Improvements that of course would be taken for granted by the next generation of naysayers. The Battle of Munalist was an epic space battle that tested Anakin's skills as a pilot, Jedi, and ship engineer. By using the Force to guide his actions and the Azure Angel itself, and survive an incredible duel with Asajj Ventress and her Genevex class Starfighter. A real testament to her piloting skills and the Solar Sail is that she actually lands the first shot. The dogfight would take them from space, down to the Munalist atmosphere, through the maze of skyscrapers in their capital, and back out through space and over to Yavin 4. Though Anakin would eventually defeat the Dark Jedi, before that Ventress was able to detonate explosive that sent all of Anakin's hard work up in flames. He would later pilot a series of other Delta Sevens before constructing the Azure Angel 2. This model was able to improve even further, and incorporate a light shield generator, something that helped the Chosen One destroy innumerable starfighters, but also the Separatist flagship, the Corpulentus. And then later, during the Battle of Rendili, he disabled their command ship, a Dreadnought-class heavy cruiser. But keep in mind, the fate of the Azure Angel 2 is as of yet, still unknown. That's it for its history, but you definitely want to hear these cool facts and behind-the-scenes stuff. It was first introduced in the 2003 Clone Wars cartoon, but the Blade of Doran is first seen in the third episode of the Clone Wars animated series. Additional information was gained via the complete Star Wars Encyclopedia, the Clone Wars Campaign Guide, and official Starships and Vehicles Collection 18. 
The Azure Angel 2 first appears in the novel Jedi Trial, but later appears in the comic Republic, Dreadnoughts of Rundili, and even gets a mention in Labyrinth of Evil. And in the Revenge of the Sith video game, the Azure 2 can be spotted, so it at least survived the Clone Wars, though we don't know where it is now. Definitely let me know what you guys think about this ship in the comments down below. Do you think the ship makes sense, or is it too overpowered? And would you want to see it in a game like Battlefront? If you want to connect with us, help support this channel, or get your own copies of the reference material used to make this video, be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout out to our supporters over on Patreon, but most important of all, remember, we lost R4P22 too soon, and the Force will be with you, always.